It is very common for young gentlemen growing up in an old boys school to be in search of heroic figures to look up to. Some of them might be admired for their heroics in society. Others might be adored for their skills and records on the football pitch. Some might look up to heroes who are fictional. And still others might be remembered for turning the theater of dreams into the theater of memes. Now, whether you regard the above gentlemen as true heroes or not, today I'd like to introduce to you two self-proclaimed heroes, one from the fictional world and the other from actual history. Don Quixote is a fictional character who regards himself as a brave knight off on a conquest to remove the wrongdoings of this world. Here, we see an image which shows what appears to be a man holding a blue object in his hand. What is being held may be a spear, a wooden stick, or tree branch, as the picture is very blurry. But the ambiguity of the picture is not a result of poor drawing technique. Rather, it is part of the illustrator's ingenious design to portray Don Quixote as a very ridiculous man, someone who regards himself as a brave warrior who is about to save his people, and yet he's delusional enough to think that he's holding a spear when in fact he might be arming himself with something as fragile as a tree branch. His shield could be nothing more than the lid of a dustbin, and the general he salutes to could be nothing more significant than the statues of lions you see outside the main doors of various HSBC headquarters and branch buildings. Now all this could be very comical, but when a person in real life groundlessly considers himself a hero, that could be very damaging and even fatal. The book of Acts mentions a man named Saul, who was both a Roman citizen and a Jew. As a man of prestige, social status, Saul had a very powerful influence in society, and with that influence, he was able to persecute those who belonged to the church, arrest those who called themselves Christians, and murder those who preached about Jesus Christ. And in doing so, Saul was absolutely convinced that he was doing the right thing, that he was removing those who had wrong ideas, that he was a true hero, and that he was murdering Christians for the sake of God. Yet during one of the many journeys that Saul made to further persecute Christians, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there, with Saul, stood there speechless. He heard the sound but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. But after being blinded for three days, not only did God restore Saul's physical sight to him, God also removed Saul's spiritual blindness and gave Saul the ability to see the truth. Subsequently, Saul, who was also known as Paul, became a very faithful apostle of Jesus. Instead of being the one to speak against Jesus, Paul became a witness of Jesus. Instead of being the one to persecute the church, Paul became one who was persecuted for the sake of the church. Instead of being the one to murder Christians, Paul was ultimately murdered because he believed in Christ, spoke for Christ, and lived for Christ. So how does all this relate to us? In this day and age, when the whole world becomes increasingly polarized, you will see countless men from all sides of the political aisle portray themselves as the hero to save the day. With technology allowing everyone to be outspoken and heard through the internet and social media, you will see countless men and women become the new Don Quixote, marching around the city with a vision to save the world, but doing so without sound knowledge or judgment. More importantly, everyone in the school hall, starting with I myself, the speaker, to everyone seated here, may one day be guilty of passionately doing what we consider heroic, and yet be so awfully wrong and far from the truth, just like Saul before his conversion. 
No one here can claim himself better or worse than Saul, and all of us, just like the Apostle Paul, are in need of God's grace to open our eyes and to remove the spiritual blindness in us. So what can we do to prevent ourselves from blindly becoming a self-proclaimed hero? And what can we do to anchor ourselves in the truth? The Bible teaches us to always equip ourselves with the full armor of God, starting with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. For the Bible explains that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms, referring to the forces that do not belong to the physical world, but rather in the world unseen. In this present evil age, may God remove from us the imaginary armor of Don Quixote, remove from us spiritual blindness, and equip us with his truth and with the full armor of God. Amen.